Hello to all and welcome to my Samsung Galaxy X-Cover 2 review, also known as the S7710. As you've come to expect of my videos, this device belongs to me, therefore there is quite a high dose of subjectivity here, and actually I'm not even going to try to correct it since I'm not an experienced reviewer and this is not a state-of-the-art relevant piece of tech. I mean, it's almost one decade old, so by now it's out of everybody's mind. But anyway, back to this phone. Actually, my first Android smartphone. I was a bit biased when first using this type of cell phone. I'm a bit backwards and a traditionalist. I think cameras should be cameras, phones should be phones, and PDAs should do the rest. Case in point. I used the BlackBerry extensively before owning this phone. Come to think of it, I used to like this Galaxy X cover all the more due to this color combo, which actually I customized on my previous BlackBerry myself. So I added this red bezel, this red uh, screen uh, glass and this red uh, keyboard and I well I instantly fell in love with the shape and the design of this uh, X cover 2 due to this uh, uh, this piece of trim here that it looks like anodized red or something like that it's all plastic sure but very well put together clearly separated from the rest of the flock it's brawny, burly looks, tough exterior, nice rugged image, and IP67 water resistance. Quite the novelty back then. I used to throw it in the pool just for kicks and to impress my friends with this feature. Well, to tell you the truth, it did handle water quite well, but the earpiece mesh got flooded each time, so I had to blow on it vigorously after each escapade to make it work properly again. Nothing permanent, but a bit of a setback, a nuisance. Anyway, the nice red outer edges seem like sort of a, some sort of anodized aluminium, even though it's plastic fantastic all day long. And to top things off, scratch resistant glass, though an unspecified variety. Battery life was quite impressive, but then again you didn't have too many features to burn through. Screen is just a decent 4-inch LCD, but it's nice enough and was miles ahead of Chinese competition from back then. You know, the type of sub 150 euro phone which you could get 10 years ago was not much. CPU performance is not great though, as the thing only has a dual core 1.0 GHz Cortex A9 under the hood, running on Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean. Memory is also frugally offered at 4 GB storage, about 2, 2 GB of that is user accessible, and 1 GB of RAM. A fairly mediocre 5 megapixel camera with 720p video ca capability runs up the specs. Even though the resolution was on par with other offerings, picture quality was low. Washed and blurred corners, soft edges, and weak colors, except for extremely sunny conditions, but you can see the sample for yourselves, which I'll add right in this video. This thing was actually building on the impact that the Galaxy S2 had on the mobile phone market, or at least that's how I remember things, since there were not a lot of Samsung Androids back then. Uh, they had invested some credit into the Windows mobile ecosystem, Samsung did, with the likes of the i900 Omnia, so Android was not yet a household name as far as Samsung was concerned. Funny enough, I used to hate pre-Android Sammy phones, and right after the touchscreen bar smartphone revolution, I came to consider the South Korean giant as a bit of an underdog variant, a subtle, elegant, but budget-friendly alternative 
to the gimmicky Apple products. Speaking of which, let's check out the minimalist OS skin. So let me just turn the phone on. Still works like a charm after all these years. I haven't charged it for about, oh, I don't know, three years, two years, something like that. So let me just, let it just run through its um, startup procedure. Interestingly enough, I don't know if you can see this, there are not a lot of scratch marks on this glass, even though I didn't use a screen protector. And I used this phone quite extensively for about three years. So yeah, it's a great phone in that regard. It's very rigid, solid, look, no bending, flexing. So very well put together. Yeah, the rubberized uh, back uh, sort of feels a bit uh, pudgy and uh, I don't know, it's starting to come apart. I didn't uh, clean it uh, very uh, thoroughly, so maybe this is just grime and dirt from previous years of usage. Somewhere and tear here on the bottom on the base of the phone. I loved these these hard keys here but anyway let's let it turn on. Okay so check out TouchWiz UI 5. Nice white on black font if you go into settings menu. So I like this um, font on black background, reduced number of animations, clear menus, limited interconnectivity. I think this thing can go without Google registration. I don't know for sure, but I'll check out Play Store to see if it's registered right now. Yeah so it doesn't have a Google account. So you can operate this thing without a Google account, but you cannot install programs, features and uh, games and so on. The shape is a bit odd, the bezels are thick and the USB cover is sort of a low point in ergonomics. It doesn't seem to want to secure itself shut from the first try. So also, also there are a lot of these phones which got this piece of plastic trim broken due to heavy usage. So it mine is still in great shape though and it has been a daily driver for almost three years. Afterwards, I switched to the Galaxy A510, the first A5 from 2016, but that's a story for another time. The screen is a decent 4-inch LCD, but it's nice enough and was miles ahead of Chinese competition from back then. You know the sub 150 euro phone lot in 2010 to 2015 there wasn't much going on. This was a bit more expensive at about 250 euros, but it was well worth the difference, the extra money. Of course, being an IP67 phone back in 2013, when cell phone manufacturers still offered removable battery options in the cell phones, well, that meant that this this um, back cover was a bit more special. It had some um, rubberized lining around the battery and the uh, innards of the phone and well a lot of screws but visible ones and this interesting latch securing mechanism here which you could operate well it was advertised to be operated with a coin but or with a key but I always um, uh, hated that because you risk uh, scratching this metal trim so I always did it with my um, 
with my nail, my fingernail, it's easy, easy enough and it doesn't break off your, your fingers. So let me just turn it off so I can show you the battery and the innards of the phone. So a fairly capacious battery, <laughs> a fairly good sized battery. It has 1700 milliamps. And this is the inside of the phone right here. I don't know if you can see the writing. So there you have it. The inside of the X cover 2. Kind of miss the days when you could open up your phone and replace your battery. Yeah, and the jack entrance, the jack port, 3.5 millimeter jack port is right here on top and also covered by a piece of trim plastic. Could you still use this phone today? Well, yes, provided you don't really need apps or games or navigations or social media or anything else for that matter. But it's got one thing going for it. It's very stable compared to other uh, old no-name Chinese phones that seem to pop out and disappear. Then again, old ones and not today's budget-oriented rich offerings which would, would simply mop the floor with this thing. So if you have one of these phones lying around and maybe you wish to part ways with it, make sure you gift it maybe to an elderly person who might appreciate the, I don't know, the high fonts and the vivid screen, apt resolution and, well, this big font lettering. Then again, is just as well a common but obsolete mobile phone that's worth next to nothing on the market these days. I will surely hold on to mine just because I like the way it's put together.